From Hollywood, California, we bring you another prize Dr. Christian play called Black Magic, starring Gene Herschel, and presented for your pleasure by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Men, let's take a magic carpet trip around the world in the interest of well-groomed hair. Now, off to the desert. Here we find the sheep with his slicked down hair. That plastered down look is enough to scare a harem. Next to the jungles of Africa. We find the Zulu with his hair standing on end. Fuzzy wuzzy hair is considered good grooming, but only deep in the heart of the jungle. Back home again, we find many a man who starts the day looking like a sheik and ends up looking like a Zulu. The trouble is, these men douse their hair. That slicks it down. Later, the dousing evaporates and the hair becomes wild and messy again. But if you will use Vaseline hair tonic, you can avoid both these unpleasant results and have good-looking, natural-looking hair instead. Vaseline hair tonic is one preparation you don't have to douse on. Just shake a few drops on your comb and run it through your hair a couple of times. Or sometimes rub a little directly on the scalp. What a difference Vaseline hair tonic makes. Your hair looks live and natural. It has an attractive, healthy look and stays neatly in place all day. You don't end up with a wild, bushy effect because Vaseline hair tonic won't dry out your hair. Instead, it supplements the natural scalp oils, gives double care, both scalp and hair. Get Vaseline hair tonic tonight. Only 40 or 70 cents. Tonight's prize play, Black Magic, is the contribution of Dr. William F. Bose of Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Bose was born in Boston. After graduating from Harvard College, he studied in Europe and received the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry from Heidelberg. While there, he became interested in the chemistry of drugs and poisons and their effect on human beings. He taught chemistry at Harvard College for one year, but his desire to learn more about poisons caused him to enroll as a student at the Harvard Medical School. Thereafter, Harvard granted him the Parker Traveling Fellowship for further study in Europe. With such a background, it was natural that the government and lawyers should call on Dr. Bose as a witness to tell courts and juries how chemicals and poisons work on human beings. Many of his cases have been famous trials in our state and federal courts. Tonight's play, Black Magic, is based on a recent trial in which Dr. Bose testified. The cast tonight includes Gene Hersholt in his popular role of Dr. Christian and Lurene Tuttle as his secretary, Judy Price. Janet Russell plays the part of Molly. Jack Edwards, Jr. plays the part of Joe Cronin, her boyfriend. Eric Rolfe is heard as Bob Hunt, lawyer. Harry Lang as George Polos. Howard McNear as Dr. J. Frank Martin as Roy Davis, the druggist. Earl Ross as Judge Fabian. And Joe Latham as Mr. Jernigan, lawyer. And so the curtain rises. The scene is Dr. Christian's familiar office. A cheerful wood fire burns in the old brick fireplace, and a softly shaded light shines down on the worn leather armchair where the good doctor sits reading, out loud as it happens, from what appears to be a handwritten manuscript. The first person who noticed anything wrong was Joe Cronin, who called for her at her room. It was like magic, he said later, like black magic. Black magic? My goodness, what are you reading? Oh, Judy, I... I didn't hear you come in. No wonder all the attention you're paying that story. What is it? My speech, Judy. I've been invited to speak at a reunion banquet of my class in medical school. And you're going to talk about black magic to a lot of doctors? Well, I wanted something different. Something unusual. Something all those physicians and surgeons hadn't heard before. And I finally thought of something that would fill the bill exactly. The uh, black magic case I had about a year ago. Molly Welsh and the trial, of course. Black magic. Oh, what a wonderful title. Read it to me, won't you? Oh, Judy. Oh, please. Besides, it'll be good practice for you. All right. Now, where do I get comfortable? <sighs> there. 
Well, I started my story the night that uh, Joe Cronin and Molly Welch were going to the movie. You remember? Mm Mm-hmm, that's right. You had just called for Molly at a rooming house and was surprised to find her answering the doorbell herself. Uh, All dressed and ready to go. She opened the door and spoke first. Well, good evening, Mr. Cronin. Well, great guns, Molly. Don't tell me you're all ready for a change. As soon as I finish putting on this lipstick. Well, hurry. We want to get in for the first show. There. I guess that's good enough. Mm Mm-hmm. Come on. Oh, boy, what a night. Indian summer, Molly. I'll bet I look like an Indian slapping this makeup on in that dark hallway. (laughs) Here's my car. Hop in. Wait a minute, under the street light. I'll bet my lipstick's smeared. Yeah, let's see. Well, how is it? Uh, lift your face up a little more toward mine, huh? Joe, (laughs) not here under the light. Molly. Molly, what on earth? What's the matter? Molly, your... Well, your lips are all black. Oh, Joe, stop kidding. I'm not. Wait, let me see. Open your mouth again. Joe, are you serious? Your tongue, Molly, it's turning black, too. Here, give me a mirror. Here, now, look. Joe, the whole inside of my mouth is black, too. Black as ink. Oh, simply awful. What do you suppose it is? Well, something's poisoned, Joe. Poisoned? You think I've been poisoned? Joe, I may be dying. Help me, you've got to help me. Now, listen, get hold of yourself. Don't go to pieces now. But I've been poisoned, Joe. You said so yourself. Oh, Joe, I've been poisoned. Get in that car. I can't. I can't move. Well, I'll put you in then. Come on. There. Hurry. Get me to the doctor before it's too late. Who is your doctor? Dr. J in Northport. You know him, Joe. Oh, hurry, darling. Hurry, Joe. Hurry before it's too late. Is it, Dr. J? What's the matter with me? I'm afraid you've been poisoned, Miss Welch. Oh, Doctor. When did you first notice this uh, blackness of the mouth? About half an hour ago. Joe and I were just starting for River's End for the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. When did you eat in last? Just a short time before. Well, she just finished supper. You see, we wanted to get an early start. What did you eat for supper tonight? Well, I didn't bother with much. I cooked some asparagus. That's all I ate. Uh, how did you prepare this asparagus, Miss Welch? Well, I, I just boiled it in the usual way. I have a little hot plate in my room. Then I, I drained it and had it on toast. Did you use any sauce? Yes, yes, some drawn butter. But, Doctor, I've eaten asparagus before and... How did the asparagus look and taste? All right. It, it looked like any asparagus and it tasted all right. It couldn't have caused my mouth and lips to turn black, could it? I'm afraid this bunch of asparagus could, Miss Welch. I believe that you have two main poisoning. No. Oh, don't say I'm that. I'm afraid it's true. I'll watch closely for any new symptoms. Meanwhile, you must have complete rest and quiet for about ten days. But my word... Oh, that's out of the question for the time being. I'm going to fix something for you to take. And I want you to go right home to bed. Oh, Joe. Joe, darling, I'm so afraid. Where did you get that asparagus? At George Polo's fruit store in River's End. So George Polo sold it to you. He's the cause of this. Joe... What's the matter? Now, don't worry, darling. We'll get right after him. We'll sue him, that's what. We'll make him pay plenty for selling you poison food. Dr. Christian. Yes, Judy. Two gentlemen to see you. Mr. Hunt, your lawyer friend, and Mr. Polos, who has a fruit store on State Street. Well, that's a strange combination. I wonder what... They the... seem very anxious to see you. Oh, show them in, Judy. Mm-hmm. Right away. Come right in, gentlemen. Oh, nice of you to see us so promptly, Paul. Oh, come on in, Bob. You know George Polos? Yes, of course. Come in. Good morning, Dr. Christian. Well, sit down. I hope neither of you is sick. Oh, no. We're both all right, Paul. I came along with George because he was, uh... Well, he had some legal trouble. Yeah. Well, I... I don't see how I can be of any help there. Oh, but you can, Paul. You see, a few days ago, a young woman named Molly Welch bought a bunch of asparagus at George's store. I was offering it as a special on sale that day. And about ten days later, George received a lawyer's letter from Jernigan's office. Jernigan? Yes, he just started practicing in Northport recently. Anyway, he claimed that Miss Welch was made ill by the asparagus and was bringing suit. What was wrong with the asparagus? The letter said it was bad and contained a poison. I see. But uh, why have you come to me, Bob? We think the girl's mistaken. That the asparagus was all right. And that if she were really ill, there was some other reason. That's right, Dr. Christian. 
And to show this is true, Mr. Hunt says we need a medical witness. No, but Bob, you know I couldn't possibly qualify as an expert on food poisoning. We both feel that you can give us all the medical help we need. Well, I'll be glad to do what I can. That is, uh, if the case isn't beyond my scope. I brought some papers to leave with you that'll explain everything. Oh, I see. You'll see there, uh, she went to a doctor, Dr. J in Northport. He'd been treating her regularly. Mm -hmm. He told her she had tomain poisoning and that the asparagus must have been bad. He gave her some medicine, called on her three times, and after ten days, let her go back to work. It uh, says here her mouth turned black. It's black as ink. Uh, does she say anything about having aches or pains or being nauseated? Well, she states that she had considerable nausea, felt faint for days, and had uh, practically a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. You say she'd been going to Dr. J regularly. Uh, had she been ill before? No, not actually ill. She'd been feeling tired and run down, and Dr. J had prescribed a mild tonic. I see. Well, I'll have to read the whole history of the case. Oh, then you will help us, Dr. Christian? Well, I'll try. Uh, how much time can you give me? Well, the case is scheduled to come up in court Wednesday of next week. Oh, that gives me nearly a week. Maybe I can help you after all. This girl had something queer the matter with her, but it certainly was not to main poisoning because there isn't any such thing. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, Dr. Christian. That's swell of you, Paul. Oh, uh, uh, there's one more thing before you leave, Mr. Paulus. Yes, Doctor? Uh, have you any nice, fresh asparagus in your store today? Well, yes. I guess we got a few bunches left, but not on special sale today. <laughs> well, that's all right. Uh, save me a nice bunch. Of asparagus? Yes, I'll stop by and pick it up later this morning. Hi, hello, Dr. Christian. What brings you down to the drugstore so early this morning? Uh, business, Roy. I want to look through your prescription book, if I may. Why, sure. Sure, I'll get it. Anything wrong? No, no, I just want to check back on some old prescriptions of mine. Here you are. Thank you, Roy. Uh, want to sit down here? No, thanks. I don't think it'll take me very long. Well, here are your prescriptions here, and these others, the green ones, are the ones I filled for Dr. J. He sends them over from Northport. Oh, yes, that's right. They don't have a registered pharmacist over there, do they? No. No, there's no one qualified to fill prescriptions. All his patients come to me. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever fill any prescription for Miss Welsh? Um, Molly Welsh? Yes. Oh, sure. Let's see the book a minute. I understand that she's been going to Dr. J for some time now. Said she felt nervous and run down. Yeah, but, uh, there's some prescriptions I filled for about a month ago. Oh, let me see that a minute, will you, Roy? Here. No, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I see. Hey, you're not getting mixed up in this trial business, are you? I understand this Welsh girl is suing George Polis. Yes, she is. Dr. Christian turning detective? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've tried my hand at most everything else. <laughs> well, are those the prescriptions you want to see? Yes, they're exactly what I wanted to see. Thank you, Roy. You're welcome. Anything else I can do? Yes, there is. I want you to fill a prescription for me. And what'll that be? Exactly the same thing Dr. J prescribed for Miss Welsh a month ago. Uh, this prescription here. This one? Here? That's the one. Oh, but you don't look run down, Doctor. No, I'm not, but you see, I want to try a little experiment. There's something I've got to find out before the trial begins, and I think that prescription is going to give me a clue. Uh, I'll have to try it anyway. Dr. Christian speaking. Oh, yes, Bob. Uh, yes. I've been thinking about the case, and I think I may be able to help you. Yes. Uh, I'm afraid of one thing, though. I think Mr. Jernigan will try to stop my testifying in some way. Yes. Uh, uh, but wait, Bob. I have an idea. Uh, no, I can't tell you now. Uh, come on over here after you close the office this evening. Uh, oh, by the way, Bob. What judge is sitting now? Oh, Judge Fabian presiding? <laughs> That's good. He's a fine judge with a lot of horse sense. <laughs> well, all right. See you later, Pop. Goodness, I thought you'd never get here. 
I wonder where Dr. Christian is. He hasn't come yet. I'm worried about him. What for? Oh, the way he's acting lately. So strangely. He's scared to death he might poison himself trying to find out what was wrong with this Welsh girl. I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Say, did I miss much of the trial? No, not much. Jennigan just finished with Molly Welch, and Bob Hunt's going to cross-examine her now. Oh, that should be good. Come on, let's sit down back here. All right. You may cross-examine, Mr. Hunt. Miss Welch. Miss Welch, had you ever seen Dr. J before your, uh, recent illness? Why, uh, yes, I, I went to see him the week before. Just why did you pay him this visit? Well, I'd been working nights, and I was feeling run down and tired. Did he give you some medicine? He gave me a tonic. You remember what it was? Yes. It was a liquid medicine called beef, iron, and wine. The doctor said all three were in it and that it was fine tonic. Did the doctor tell you how to take it? I was to take a teaspoonful three times a day. At any particular times of the day? Yes, after meals. Are you taking it now? Yes. That's all, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Jernigan, no more questions, Your Honor. I rest my case. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Hunt. May I ask Mr. Jernigan why he hasn't brought Dr. J into this courtroom to testify? Well, you see, Your Honor, uh, as a matter of fact, Dr. J is, uh, uh, he's sick in bed with the flu. <laughs> Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Hunt? Mr. Paulus admits the sale of the asparagus. It will not be necessary to put him on the stand. I have, therefore, only one witness to call. Dr. Christian. <laughs> Dr. Christian! <laughs> Oh, Roy, where do you suppose he is? I don't know. Oh, oh there he is, coming in the courtroom now. I'm sorry I'm late, Bob. Will you please take the stand, Dr. Christian? Yes. Certainly, Bob. Good morning, Judge Pavian. Good morning, Doctor. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you out? I do. Sit down, Dr. Christian. Thank you. Oh, I, I must be out of breath. Will you uh, kindly tell the court all about your training and experience as a physician, Dr. Christian? Well, I guess almost everybody here knows everything there is to know about my work. There's hardly a person here from Rivers End especially. I haven't had a, as a patient at one time or another. Well, as a matter of fact, they could probably tell you more about my work, Your Honor, than I can. <laughs> Quiet, please. <laughs> Proceed, Dr. Christian. Must I really go through all that, Your Honor? Well, I guess in your case, Doctor. Why, Doctor, what's the matter with you? Are you sick? <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm all right, Your Honor. But your lips and your tongue are as black as if you'd been lapping an inkwell. Oh, that? Oh. <laughs> That's because I had some asparagus for breakfast, Your Honor, and took a teaspoon of beef, iron, and wine tonic right after it. Now, Doctor, has this anything to do with the case? Yes, Your Honor, it has. I object. Well, Mr. Jennigan, just what is the ground for your objection? The fact that Dr. Christian had asparagus for breakfast is entirely immaterial and has nothing to do with the case. Oh, I see. Well, since I asked Dr. Christian myself about his tongue, I think I shall hear his answer. I'll note your exception. Proceed with your questions, Mr. Hunt. Dr. Christian, how did you happen to eat asparagus for breakfast and then take some beef, iron, and wine tonic right after it? I object. Overruled. Exception noted. Well, uh, do you want me to tell the whole story? Please do, Dr. Christian. I object, Your Honor. Overruled. Exception noted. Continue, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Hunt and Mr. Polus came to my office and told me about the suit, and Mr. Hunt let me read Miss Welch's statement. Well, at first I was completely mystified. Then, when I began thinking about it later, one remark kept coming back to me time after time. What was that remark, Dr. Christian? A statement by Mr. Cronin in the record. He said to Miss Wells that her tongue was black as ink. Ink. Ink, I kept thinking, and then, well, well, why not? I knew that asparagus contains tannic acid, and that if tannic acid comes into contact with a solution of iron, well, you get ink. I object. What has ink got to do with this case? I was just going to explain that, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Proceed. Well, I had the tannic acid in the asparagus, uh, but where did the iron come from? Then it occurred to me that perhaps the young lady was taking a tonic containing iron. So I went down to our Davis drugstore and told him I wanted to look over some recent prescriptions he had filled. I object! Well, well Roy didn't. 
He let me see the book at once. <laughs> Proceed with your witness, Mr. Hunt. What did you discover in that prescription book, Dr. Christian? Well, I found not only my own recent prescriptions, but Dr. J's as well. Y you see, Your Honor, Roy Handel's all the work from Northport, too. Continue. Well, that's how I learned that Dr. J had prescribed beef, iron, and wine for Molly Wells, and that she was taking it three times a day after meals. When I got home, I ate some asparagus and followed it with a teaspoon of beef, iron, and wine. And the result was like magic. My tongue had turned black like Miss Welch's. This morning, I repeated the experiment to show the result to this court. One more question, Dr. Christian. Is the black on your tongue in any way harmful? Not in the least. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Do you wish to cross-examine Mr. Jernigan? Mr. Jernigan. Where's Mr. Jernigan? I think Mr. Jernigan has just disappeared, Your Honor, into the hallway through the anteroom, taking all of his books and papers with him, well, that settles that. The District Court of Rivers End finds for the defendant, George Polis. Oh, Dr. Christian, you are wonderful. No wonder you've been going around these last two days looking like a cat. You just swallowed the canary. Oh, not the canary, Judy. The asparagus and the beef iron and wine. You know, your mouth really is a black thing. Black magic, Judy. Black magic. Did you see how it made Mr. Jernigan in his case against Mr. Polis disappear right into thin air? <laughs> And the curtain comes down on another Dr. Christian prize play. Our popular star, Gene Hirschholt, is waiting to greet you and tell you about next week's prize winner, so I'll be brief. The summer is over, but dry scalp lingers on. Do you find your hair is dull, lifeless, and hard to manage, and your scalp tight, itchy, and dry? Any one of these signs of dry scalp should warn you to get Vaseline hair tonic. Vaseline hair tonic is your best bet for checking dry scalp, because it actually supplements the natural scalp oils, so important for good-looking hair. Different from most preparations, it contains absolutely no drying ingredient. Before every shampoo, massage the scalp briskly with plenty of Vaseline hair tonic. This stimulates the circulation and loosens dandruff scales. Your hair is left soft and easy to comb. Between shampoos, use Vaseline hair tonic for good grooming. It keeps the hair really healthy looking and natural looking. Get Vaseline hair tonic tonight. And now, here is Jean Herschel. <laughs> what kind of a play has been selected for next week, Mr. Herschel? Next week, our prize play is from Richmond, Virginia. The author is Jean Scott Anderson. The play is a delightful comedy called Miss Lizzie's Broker. I know you love it. So be sure to join us again next week, same time, same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Your first aid kit to be really complete should certainly contain Vaseline jelly. In nine out of ten American homes, Vaseline jelly is the first thought in first aid for everyday burns, scalds, and other minor emergencies. Get soothing, healing Vaseline jelly tonight. It costs only ten cents. Art Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>